Hey everyone, welcome to this full paper walkthrough for Engar 2023, section 1A. It's definitely one of the harder papers. You have 20 questions in this section and approximately 25 minutes to get through them. So yeah, let's get straight into it. So question one is a pretty straightforward maths question. We are told that the surface area of the sphere is equal to 10 times the surface area of the closed cylinder. Now the surface area of the sphere is 4 pi times big R squared, and the surface area of the cylinder is 2 pi R h plus 2 pi R squared, where h is equal to 4 R from the question. So that comes out to 10 pi R squared. You then equate the surface area of the sphere with 10 times the surface area of the cylinder to obtain the relationship big R squared is equal to 25 R squared. So big R is equal to 5 times little r, which is A. Question 2 is a pretty simple conservation of energy question. So the work done by the robotic arm to bring the spaceship to a stop is equal to the initial Ke of the spaceship. Work done is force times distance, and the force is 1,000 newtons. So 1,000 times the distance is half times 10,000 times 2 squared. And the distance comes out to 20 meters, which is F. Question 3 is a rearrangement question. The most important thing to bear in mind with these sorts of questions is that you don't mix up your signs, especially when you're moving things across from one side of the equals to the other. Try not to mix up a positive and a negative. So in this case, you start off with y is equal to p minus q, q minus r over s minus x. And when you work through it to make x the subject, you end up with x is equal to s minus q minus r over p minus y, which is c. So for question four, which is a circuits question, you want to use the current and power readings to work out the resistance of a resistor and the voltage across the battery. So the power is I squared R, and this is equal to one watt. So the resistance is one over the current squared, which is one ohm. The voltage across the battery is then I times R, which, is, which comes out to one volt. You can then work out the total resistance of the resistors in parallel using the equation for parallel resistors, and this comes out to two thirds of an ohm. And the new power transferred from the battery is V squared over R, which is 1 squared over 2 thirds, which is 1.5 watts. The new reading on the ammeter is now 2 thirds of the total current, because the branch that the ammeter is on has half the resistance of the other branch. So the current would be divided in such a way that double the current would pass through the branch with the ammeter, compared to the branch with the two resistors. So the current through the ammeter is 2 thirds times 3 over 2, which is the total current, which comes out to 1 amp. Question 5 looks like a really complicated question, but when you break it down, it's not too difficult. So you're told that WXYZ is a square of side length 1, so the area of the square is 1 unit squared. And from that point on, you basically want to use the ratio of the lengths they've given you to work out the side lengths of the two triangles and the trapezium that surround the shaded area. Once you've worked out these side lengths, you can work out the area of the square that's unshaded and then subtract this from the total area of the square, which is 1, to give you a shaded area of 23 over 60. For question 6, the spring question, you want to be using the values on the graph. So the energy stored by a spring is equal to half kx squared, which is equal to half fx using the relationship f is equal to kx. Now you're told that when the energy is 0.015 joules, the extension squared is 25 centimeters squared. So the extension is 5 centimeters, which is 0.05 meters. You can then rearrange the equation half fx is equal to energy to work out the force as 0.6 newtons, which is b. So for question 7, it's easiest to break it down into powers of 3 and then use the exponential laws to end up with an equation in terms of x that you can solve. So you end up with 3 to the 6x minus 12 over 3 to the 4x minus 6 is equal to 3 to the power of 6. And when you divide two exponentials, you subtract the exponent. So it becomes 3 to the 6x minus 12 minus 4x plus 6 equals 3 to the 6. So you can then take logs of both sides to end up with 6 is equal to 2x minus 6. So x is equal to 6, which is d. 
For question eight, you want to start off by using the pressure and cross-sectional area values to work out the force exerted due to the weight of the bar, which comes out to 5.4 newtons. Now, G, you assume is 10 newtons per kg, so mass of the bar uh, comes out to 0.54 kg. And you can use this mass and the volume of 180 centimeters cubed to calculate the density of the metal as 540 grams over 180, which is 3 grams per centimeter cubed. For question 9, it's easiest to define the coach's salary last year as X and then work from there. So the coach's salary last year was 80% of the player's salary. So the player's salary last year was X over 0.8. Now this year, the coach received a 15% increase. So that X became 1.15X. And the player received a 38% increase. So X over 0.8 became 1.38X over 0.8. Now you're asked to find what percentage of the star player's new salary is the coach's new salary. So you divide the coach's new salary by the player's new salary, which comes out to 0.92 over 1.38, which is two thirds. So the answer is D. So now moving on to question 10. And for these types of radioactive decay questions, you basically want to make a table of how the values of X and Y change relative to each other over time. So when time is equal to zero, you start off with double the number of atoms of X compared to Y. And if you work through the table, you'll end up with on the sixth day, the number of atoms of X and the number of atoms of Y are equal to each other. So the answer is six days, which is E. So for question 11, the average speed is equal to the total distance traveled over the total time taken. Now the total distance is easy to calculate. It's 100 plus 200 plus 100, which is 0.4 kilometers. The total time can be worked out by dividing the distance by the speed, remembering to convert the distance into kilometers. So you end up with a total time taken of 5 over 120 hours. You then divide 0.4 kilometers by 5 over 120 hours to work out an average speed of 9.6 kilometers per hour, which is B. For question 12, you're told that the top layer is a metal plate and the bottom layer is insulating material. So obviously, the change in temperature across each layer would be different because the two materials are different. Now, the metal plate conducts heat a lot better than the insulating material. So the change in temperature across the metal plate would be a lot lower than the change in temperature across the insulating material, which means that when you look at the graphs, the only one that reflects this is A. For question 13, you're told that the two objects X and Y are similar, so their side lengths are in the same ratios. The surface area of Y is double the surface area of X, which means the side length of y is root 2 times the side length of x because the ratio of surface area is the ratio of side length squared. The ratio of volumes is the ratio of side lengths cubed. So the ratio of the volume of y to the volume of x is 2 root 2 is to 1. So you know that vy is equal to 2 root 2 vx and this is equal to the volume of x plus 7 root 2. And you then rearrange this and rationalize the denominator to get the volume of x as 4 plus root 2 centimeters cubed. For question 14, you're told that both transformers are ideal and 100% efficient. So the power in the cables is equal to the power that's delivered to the town. VCIC is equal to VTIT. And you can rearrange this to obtain the voltage in the cable as 110,000 volts. You know that at the power station, the primary coil has 300 tons and the secondary coil has 1500 tons. So using VP over VS is equal to NP over NS. You can obtain the voltage at the station as 300 over 1500 times 110,000, which is 22,000 volts, which is C. So for question 15, there's probably loads of different ways to solve it. The way I did it was I took the three outside the brackets. So you start off with a ninth times what's in the bracket squared equals eight times 10 to the nine. You then move the nine to the other side and square what's inside the brackets. So you end up with a squared plus a squared times 10 to the four plus two times 10 to the three squared over 10 to the minus two equals 72 times 10 to the nine. 
And with a bit of rearranging and cancelling out, you end up with a squared is equal to 5. So a can be plus or minus 5, and the difference between the two solutions is to 5. For question 16, you're asked to work out the average speed of a particle in a transverse wave. You're told that the wave has a frequency of 12 hertz, so the period is 1 12th of a second. Period is 1 over frequency. So in 2 seconds, you'd have 24 periods. Now in each period, you can imagine the particle as starting off at equilibrium, going to its positive amplitude, back to equilibrium, then to its negative amplitude, and then finally back to its equilibrium position. And with an amplitude of 3 centimeters, this means that in one period, a particle travels 12 centimeters, 3 times 4. In 24 periods, it would travel 12 times 24 centimeters, and which is 288 centimeters. And in a time of 2 seconds, this means that the average speed of the particle is 144 centimeters per second. For question 17, which is a vectors question, you're told that xp is 4 minus 3 and py is double xp. So py is 8 minus 6. You can then use this and the fact that point p is located at minus 8, 5 to work out the coordinates of y as 0 minus 1. You know that qy is 7, 6. So you can subtract this vector from the position vector of y, 0 minus 1 to give the coordinates of point Q as minus 7, minus 7. For question 18, you want to use the information given to derive two equations in terms of the total voltage across the battery V tot and the current in the circuit I. So using the fact that the power is 6 watts, you derive the first equation that V tot I is equal to 6. And you know that the voltage across the battery is equal to the sum of the voltages across the resistors X and Y. So your second equation ends up being V tot is equal to 4 plus 10 I. You can then sub in 4 plus 10 I into the first equation, replacing V tot, to get a quadratic equation in terms of the current I. And you can solve this quadratic to get I as either being minus 1 or 3 fifths. And the current is obviously positive, so current is three-fifths of an amp, which is B. For question 19, you want to write 3 to the minus sine x as 1 over 3 to the sine x, so you end up with your expression as 2 over 3 to the power of sine x. Now this will take its maximum value when sine x is equal to minus 1, and the maximum value will be the inverse of 2 thirds, which is 3 halves, which is C. So question 20, last question of section 1a, and it's actually quite a difficult question because of how many steps it involves. So you want to start off by using the equation PV equals constant for both the surface and B, which is bottom of the lake. So atmospheric pressure times 720, which is the volume at the surface, is equal to the pressure at depth D plus the atmospheric pressure times the volume at the bottom, which is 90. And when you rearrange this, you end up with the pressure at depth D being equal to 7 times the atmospheric pressure. Because pressure varies linearly in a fluid, the pressure at depth d over 2 is 3.5 times the atmospheric pressure, and you want to plug this back into PV equals constant to work out the volume at depth d over 2. So atmospheric pressure times 720 is the pressure at depth d over 2 plus atmospheric pressure times the volume at depth d over 2. When you sub in that P d over 2 is equal to 3.5 PATM. The PATMs cancel out, leaving your volume as 160 centimeters cubed, which is A. Thank you for watching everyone. Hope you found it useful. And for more ESAT practice and preparation resources, make sure to check out our website. Link will be in the description.